Hello, everybody. Got something a little different in front of us today. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know, this is a flame liquor. The giveaway is there's a little burner here. So I want to do a little video. I want to show it off and talk about it a little bit. And also I want to ask for your help. Maybe one of you guys out there is more familiar with uh, with these style of engines. Because I'm not able to get it to run. The best I've been able to do is get it to pop over a couple times. But anyway, I'll describe it for those of you that don't uh, know what these engines are. Like I said before, it's a flame liquor. And it operates on vacuum rather than pressure. So the power stroke is an upward movement of the piston rather than a downward movement. So the way it works, there's, there's a valve here. You can see it open and close when I move when I crank it over, this burner will be stationed by the by the port, and on the downstroke, it sucks in hot gas from the flame. And you'll notice, zoom in a little. You notice when the piston nears bottom dead center, it pulls that valve closed. Now we've got hot gas inside the cylinder and it's cooling off due to those cooling fins. So that creates a vacuum. These engines are also called vacuum engines. And now that vacuum will pull the piston back up. And then once the gas has cooled off to uh, whatever temperature it is, whatever temperature it normalizes to in that period of time, the piston will hit that the uh, valve in the head and open the the valve again. Now it's at top dead center, and with the weight of the flywheel and the inertia of it spinning around, it continues that cycle. So I guess you could say it's a two-stroke. So on the downstroke here, it sucks in hot gas, closes the valve, the hot gas cools and shrinks, pulls the piston back up, valve opens. And the cycle repeats. <clears throat> a little history on this engine. A coworker of mine gave it to me uh, a while ago, maybe even a, maybe a year ago by now. I'm not sure. He got it at a machining and uh, manufacturing trade show. Uh, it was a Citizen trade show, uh, Citizen Screw Machine. And they had a number of machines. I wasn't there. This is, this is what he told me. There were a number of machines, and each machine was making a different part. And at the end, they assembled it, and they gave them away to people as a, as a little gift, which I think is pretty cool. This is a pretty cool thing to be handing out to, to people at a trade show. Um, as far as I know, it's all stainless steel. It hasn't rusted yet, and I haven't really put any oil on it. Uh, a lot of... Uh, I don't know if any of the other flame liquor engines you see out in YouTube are like this, but this has ball bearings on the uh, the crankshaft here. You can't can't really see them. I'm not even going to try to zoom up, but it does have a ball bearing. So yeah, it's hard to see, but it's there. Trust me. And it looks like it's got a uh, Stover flywheel on it with the holes rather than the spokes. And you can see here. Citizen. Citizen has some pretty cool videos on YouTube. If you're interested, look them up. They make screw machines. And they have some pretty cool demo videos. Well, I've got it. While well, I'm holding here, I'll give you some more close ups. See the valve mechanism here. It's piston operated. The piston comes back, and there's a rod 
that goes through there. See that rod? Piston comes up and pushes that valve. It's sliding as I have it. I'm holding it sideways. There's a little adjustment screw there that adjusts where the where this little part is this way or that way so the piston will hit at a different point in its stroke it's very nicely made runs very smoothly no real backlash or gear or rather a bearing lash or anything so, anyway, so that's that and uh, they also made the burner machined out of, again, I assume stainless steel. And I haven't really done too much research, but just with my experimentation, I've noticed that uh, denatured alcohol works far better than isopropyl alcohol. <clears throat> so anyway, like I said, I'm not able to get this running which I'm surprised because it's hasn't really been has been tampered with or anything. I've messed with this adjustment screw here for the valve timing and it doesn't seem to do very much. Um, the one thing that you might have heard as I was turning it over a minute ago, it seems to have some the, the, the bore is not uh, honed with a cylinder hone, it's just machined, so it has spiral machining marks. Even though they're very fine, it's a very nice surface finish, there's still spiral machining marks on the piston and the cylinder, and it makes sort of a, like a zipper sound as the piston goes up and down in the bore, so I figure that might be giving it a little bit of resistance, maybe? I mean, I've, give, I've, I've given the piston some oil, so it should have good, uh, compression you could say even though it doesn't operate on compression but turns over smoothly so I really don't know I, and I've also noticed that it works better with the engine about like a little higher so it sucks from the tip of the flame rather than the the, the base of the flame and also it doesn't it it uh, won't blow the flame out as readily It'll just kind of puff at the um, edge of the flame. And also I've noticed that if you have the flame off to one side like this or like this, it operates a little better than if the flame is like this, because when the piston comes up towards top dead center, there's always a little puff of gas that'll come out and it'll blow the flame away. And the flame kind of has to recover before it sucks back in. So I'm going to fill up this uh, reservoir and see if I can get it to, to pop over at all. And uh, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I don't know if these blocks I found are too high. We'll, we'll, we'll see how high the flame is. That looks pretty good, actually. And I've noticed also that helps if you let it warm up a little bit. This engine does have an operating a certain operating temperature that's optimal. Even though it does require adequate cooling to operate. And uh, while it warms up, some of you guys may have noticed my lighter. When I was, this is, it's just a Bic, it's a case. I just want to brag about it. It's a silver, sterling silver and a little piece of turquoise. When I was 18, when I graduated high school, I took my truck with the cap on it, I put a bed in the back, and I traveled the entire United States, 21,500 miles over the course of four and a half months on my own, solo road trip. And I was at Four Corners, and uh, some Native Americans were selling silver jewelry and stuff, and I saw this, and I said, I have to have it. So it's been in my pocket ever since. 
So let's see what it does. See, it wants to go like another stroke further than how much it would turn if I just spun it over cold. So let's try raising that flame up a little bit. I think I had it maybe a little too low. Feels like it could use some oil. I've been sitting a long time, that oil kind of coagulated, I guess, so I loosened it up with some WD 40. Anyway, so you see my problem. You get the idea, it doesn't run. So leave me a comment or a suggestion or something. <clears throat> uh, I don't know, should I mess with the timing or something? Is there optimal timing? Should I run a little brake cylinder hone through the, uh, through the cylinder and get some nice cross hatching on there? Maybe there's a little resistance or it's, I don't know, different fuel? Should I burn something else? I don't know. Different lubrication? Is lubrication goobering up in there? Let me know what you think. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And leave me a thumbs up or a comment. And uh, Thanks for watching. Come back for more.